Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 23rd April 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. Today's quote is a motivational quote which is given by Mahatma Gandhi. So quote mainly says that you may never know what result come of your actions. So you may never know so what is the result of your action but if you do nothing there will be no result. So if you do nothing there will be no result. So here something is better than nothing. So try to do your actions. So try to work hard. So even though if you are not sure about the results also you have to work hard. So if not in case of UPSC but you can succeed other examinations as well. So try to work hard. So now let us try to see first article it is regarding fisherman issue between India and Sri Lanka. So between India and Sri Lanka we will be having one issue that will be persistent uh, that is regarding fisherman issue. So regarding this fisherman issue for example if you say this is our Indian coast and this is our Sri Lanka right. So between this Sri Lanka and India we will be having international boundary. So many a times the fishermen from this Tamil Nadu they will be crossing this international boundary and these people will be caught by Sri Lankan Navy and their boats will be confiscated. So this is a, some issue between India and Sri Lanka. So it is not only in the case of Tamil fishermen but even Sri Lankan fishermen uh, they will be crossing this boundary and this is one important and serious conflict between India and Sri Lanka. And if you are talking about this fisherman issue, it is not only between India and Sri Lanka, but it is also between India and Pakistan. So now let us try to talk about this topic in a very great detail and I will make you understand this topic and what is written in this article. So this article is important from your GS paper to under international relations, which mainly uh, important from your mains point of view, not from prelims. So from mains, you can expect a question, but not from prelims. So what is a context here. So actually what happened between India and Sri Lanka we have joint working group okay joint working group mainly to deal with this issue of fishermen. So after gap of 15 months India Sri Lanka joint working group on fisheries they held its much awaited deliberations on March 25th. So on March 25th they came up with this deliberation regarding this fisherman issue between India and Sri Lanka. So but between the two meetings of this uh, joint working group number of events that mainly unfortunately happened. For example seven fishermen five from Tamil Nadu and two from Sri Lanka they died in mid sea clashes and as well as some sections of fishermen from Park Bay bordering districts of Tamil Nadu continue to transgress the international maritime boundary line. So case of many of them getting arrested and their boats being impounded it is confiscated by the Sri Lankan authorities. So what happened between this joint uh, working group meetings or going on okay between these two meetings so what happened so number of uh, fishermen from Sri Lanka and as well as Tamil Nadu they lost their life. And even many a times uh, fishermen from this Tamil Nadu they crossed this international maritime boundary line and after they crossed this boundary line they will be arrested by the Sri Lankan Navy and their fishing boats will be also confiscated. So if you are talking about what is the issue the issue here is trawling. So apart from poaching in this territorial waters of Sri Lanka so here Indian fishermen they are mainly using mechanized bottom trawlers. So this mechanized bottom trawlers they are one of the important issue between India and Sri Lanka because it is not only the issue of these two countries but even they will be having some negative impact on ecology of that area. So whenever we are using the trawling boats or mechanized boats they will be using heavy trawlers so that these trawlers they will be carrying the whatever the small fish that are present even that will be mainly drawn from the bottom of the sea. So it will be unsustainable fishing okay fishing practices that will lead to decreasing of number of fishes actually. So for example if we, this is a seawater level and if, if you see this is a mechanized boat is present to this mechanized boat deep and heavy nets will be tied off 
and these nets they will be bringing the fishes from the bottom of the sea so even the small small fishes will be carried so because of this it will be having some negative impact because there will be the decreasing of number of fishes that is mainly seen here so even small small fishes are also captured or carried out means what happened that will leads to decrease in the number of fishes so that will be affecting this ecology and environment of this marine ecosystem right so here the actions of this tamil nadu fishers by using this deep trawlers they will affect this ecology of that system okay ecology of that area especially marine ecosystem at the same time the fishermen from this tamil nadu they have some genuine problems so why they are crossing this international boundary line because as per agreement as per demarcation of 1974 so these fishermen from this tamil nadu they lack fishing areas they lack fishing areas because they have to now confine to only indian waters and in this indian waters they are mainly full of rocks and as less coral reefs okay they are not having a shallow region so because of this here they can't get proper fishing areas so because of that to get proper fishing they are crossing this international maritime boundary line so under this tamil nadu marine fishing regulation act of 1983 so mechanized fishing boats they can fish only beyond 3 nautical miles from the coast so because of this they are crossing this international maritime boundary line so another factor is that people of these two countries they are in general they are mainly sharing the common language common culture common religion of all which can be used purposefully to resolve any dispute so if you are talking about deep sea fishing it is also one important issue so india needs to modify the scheme on this deep sea fishing okay so on this deep sea fishing so india need to modify the scheme especially in this ramanthapuram districts so in this deep sea fishing it is also linked to ecologically uh, unstable area and that will leads to decreasing of number of fishes in this area so in this context central government and as well as state governments they need to implement tamil nadu the pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana such that it will be very useful for the fisheries and apart from that the scheme which was flagged of 2 years ago which mainly covers alternative livelihood measures to include seaweed cultivation open sea cage cultivation and as well as sea ocean ranching so apart from only catching of fishes so other important activities like seaweed cult seaweed cultivation which has which has much demand in the international market and even we can go for open sea cage cultivation and as well as sea or ocean ranching so in this way we can promote these activities especially to enhance the livelihood opportunities for these fishermen community and during our external affairs a minister visit here india also signed a memorandum of understanding with sri lanka regarding the development of fisheries harbors okay and we can go for further promoting of this uh, development of fisheries uh, harbors and it is a welcome development of this joint working group as well because they have agreed to have a joint research on fisheries okay they are going to commission this project as early as possible so not only this simultaneously both the countries that is india and sri lanka they need to explore the possibility of establishing permanent multi stakeholder institutional mechanism and this will be helpful to regulate the fishing activity in the region as well so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding raisina hill project art museums and craft of democracy so this article which is mainly talking about pradhan mantri sangrahalaya so it is a new museum which may be inaugurated by our prime minister so we are going to see details of that museum and even we need to know about what is this raisina hill project so you can get a question like so recently raisina hill project is seen in news so what it is related to so this article is important from your gs paper to under polity and governance so this topic is important from your prelims and as well as mains so now let us try to see some details regarding this museum and as well as we are going to understand what is this raisina hill project so if you are talking about this raisina hill project so the term this raisina hill which mainly coined following the acquisition of land from about 300 families from local villages was acquired under this 1894 it was acquired under this 1894 land acquisition act 
to begin the construction of viceroy's house okay the term raisina hill was coined following the acquisition of land from 300 families from local villages it was acquired under this 1894 land acquisition act to begin the construction of this viceroy's house so this viceroy's house is nothing but the present day is rashtrapati bhavan so at the time of construction of this a viceroy's house in 19, 1894 so what was the land which mainly uh, acquisited acquired uh, from this 300 families that mainly comes under this project called as raisina hill so if you're talking about context why it is in news because of uh, inauguration of art museum that is called as pradhanmantri sangrahalaya so inaugurating this pradhanmantri sangrahalaya on the grounds uh, of this teen murti house in new delhi on april 14th so our prime minister he declared that this new museum would help youth to value expansion of our constitutional government since independence so since independence how our constitutional government which may expanded so that will be known by the youth when they were when they were visiting this uh, prime minister sangra pradhan mantri sangrahalaya so if you are talking about some more important details regarding this art museum so the museum of this prime ministers or we can say pradhan mantri sangrahalaya which is being built at this teen murti estate in delhi okay so it mainly inaugurated on 14th april and this date which also coincides with the birth anniversary of dr b r ambedkar ambedkar on ambedkar jayanti so we are talking about so what will be showcased in this museum so what are the things that you are going to get if you are visiting this a museum so this museum will be covering the life of all india's prime minister okay and the role which mainly played by this prime minister also be also be displayed there displayed there and next one is their contribution will also be showcased so they will be showcasing the different prime ministers okay of india and even their role and as well as contributions will be showcased and apart from that whatever the works and as well as collections of jawaharlal nehru will forever be staying this a national memorial museum which also his residence at one point in the time okay the works and even collection of this jawaharlal nehru will however be that will be present in this uh, nehru memorial museum and apart from that whoever the prime minister they uh, they are in our independent india so they life and as well as their contributions their role will be showcased so we are talking about what are the things which are mainly displayed in this museum so in this museum prime minister speeches and as well as rare photographs and newspapers video clips interviews and original writings they will be displayed and as uh, apart from that even their personal belongings like caps uh, pens letters etc they will be also displayed in this museum and virtual reality and digital displays will be focused upon okay and this uh, pay, uh, this uh, museum will also be designed it has been designed to accommodate even our future prime ministers also and this museums will be having a ground floor first floor and a basement with all of them being galleries okay so these are the some important displays of this museum and now let's try to see next topic it is very important topic it is about postal ballot postal ballot for this nris that is non resident indians being contemplated contemplated means nothing but we are going to think about it in deep so here we are going to think about this postal ballot system for this nrs so this thing which mainly said by chief election commissioner so this article is important from your gs paper to under polity and this topic is at most important and you can get a prelims and as well as mains questions from this topic for sure so now let's try to see context ye chief election commissioner so who is our chief election commissioner now that is suni uh, sushil chandra so our chief election commissioner during a recent visit to south africa and mauritius so during visit to the south africa and mauritius he mainly asked nris non resident indians to register as overseas electors and cec that is chief election commissioner told this nris that a proposal on this ball, postal ballot for this nris it is going to be think by this election commission of india so election commission of india it is mainly going to think about this 
postal ballots for this NRS. So as of now, here Chief Election Commissioner, he says NRS in this South African Mauritius to register as overseas electors. So if you see some details, it mainly says that during interaction with the member of the Indian community, Chief Election Commissioner urged them to register them as overseas voters as the present members are very low. So as of now, NRIs who are registered for these electors, they are very low. So because of this now, CEC, that is Chief Election Commissioner, he mainly urged NRIs from the South African Nationalist Mauritius to register as overseas voters. So he also shared with the members of members that there is also extension of this electronically transmitted postal ballot system. So here, here we are going to understand what is electronically transmitted postal ballot system. Don't worry about that. So here our chief election commission, he said that there is also extension of this electronically transmitted postal ballot system facility to overseas voters. So they are also thinking about this option as well. Okay, so in the meeting with this NRA groups here, our CEC, that is Chief Election Commissioner, he mainly talked about experience of conducting elections in India. So which has about 950, there are about 950 million voters, 950 million voters in over 1 million polling stations. There are about 1 million polling stations. So here, in this 1 million polling station, there are about 950 million voters they will be voting. So here, if you see this image, which mainly talks about voting rights of NRIs. So now, let us try to talk about who is this NRI voter first of all. Who is this NRI? That is non-resident India. That means a citizen of India who is absent in our country, but he went to other country in search of employment or in a search of education, proper education, but they do not acquire the citizenship of another country. So those people called as overseas voters and these people, they are eligible for voting in India. Okay, they are eligible to be registered as a voter. And according to the provisions of the section 9 of Representation of People's Act of 1950, here NRIs, they could join this electoral rolls as elector. So this is a provision of this Pre People's Representation Act, Representation of People's Act of 1950. So you have to remember this section 19. So section 19 which mainly talks about NRIs. So I hope you understand who are these NRIs. So NRIs, they are eligible to join these electoral rolls. And I hope now you know which section of Representation of People's Act of 1950, which mainly talks about this. And if you're talking about what is this electronically transmitted postal ballot system and how it works. So under this electronical, uh, electronically transmitted postal ballot system, so a postal ballot, it is sent electronically by through a mail. Uh, to the service voter and that vote which is mainly downloaded okay and in that paper the vote will be given so after that that post ballot uh, will be uh, will be sent back and that will be need to be received by this returning officer by 8 a.m on the day of counting and the counting of the votes which mainly begins with the counting of this postal ballots so in this way this electronically transmitted postal ballot system which mainly works so if you're talking about what are the current process of voting for this Indian citizens who are living abroad, that is regarding NRIs. So voting rights for this NRIs mainly introduced only after 2011. So we came with amendment to this Representation of People's Act of 1950. So after this amendment, so the voting rights mainly given to this NRIs after that is 2011. So in NRI, okay, an NRI can vote in the constituency in which her place of residence which is mentioned as per passport so as per pass passport what is the address that you are given so in that constituency only you can go and you can vote and he or she can vote only in person and will have to produce her or his passport in the original form at the polling station so this polling this, at this polling station this passport which is mainly helpful to establish identity of that so and so person. So this is about this topic. And now let us try to see next topic it is regarding India UK different straight ties to get a booster shot. So here this article which is mainly talking about India UK relations. So this article is important from your GS paper to under international relations. 
So now let us try to see what is the context. So if you see context, it mainly says that our Prime Minister and British counterpart mainly agreed to expand, expand and to come up with new UK defence partnership, India-UK defence partnership. So here Prime Minister of India and as well as Prime Minister of UK, they mainly came up with increasing or boosting of relationship between these two countries and they decided to come up with new and expanded new and expanded india uk defense partnership and you are also going to come up with a free trade agreement that will be come up by the end of this year so this is context and if you are talking about some important details regarding this article it mainly says that after the wide range talks between prime minister of india and uk they came up with second and final day of uh, visit okay of india visit so they mainly talk to come up with open general export license okay so open general export license for india so that will helpful to reduce bureaucracy and that will also reduce the delivery times of this defense procurement so you can get a question like open general export license is seen in use so it is mainly signed between it is between india and uk and it is mainly related to decreasing of bureaucracy and as well as delivery time of this defense procurement. So this is one important prelims fact. So apart from this, British Prime Minister said that on the both the side, from Indian side and as well as from UK side, they agreed to work together to meet new threats across the land, sea, airspace and as well as cyber domains. And also India which is mainly going to get new fighter jet technology it will be helpful for uh, protecting of maritime spears and to detect and as well as to respond to the threats in this maritime spear. So this is about this topic. And now let us try to see the relationship between India and UK. So what is the boost that is mainly seen in this uh, bilateral relationship between India and UK. So if we are talking about recent developments between India and UK relations. So we are mainly having this uh, comprehensive strategic partnership. So despite the challenge which mainly posed by Russia-Ukraine crisis, India-UK relationship has been an upward trajectory now. So for example, we came up with conclusion of this uh, comprehensive strategic partnership in 2021 and also we came up with agreement for this 2030 roadmap for India-UK relations and even UK Foreign Secretary in her visit mainly emphasized regarding countering of Russian aggression and reducing of global strategic dependence on the country and they are mainly focusing on some uh, how to deter aggressors and here the secretary further we have talks on defense related uh, trades and as plus well we focused on deepening of cyber security defense cooperation between these two countries so these are some important areas of cooperation between india and uk so apart from that a joint cyber security program it is to be set and this program which is mainly focusing to protect online infrastructure in India and UK and even India UK they also plan to hold first strategic technology dialogue here regarding emerging technologies. So apart from that UK and India also agreed to strengthen their cooperation in the maritime domain as UK will join India's Indo-Pacific Ocean Initiative and become a major partner on maritime security issues as well. So this is about this uh, topic. And now let us try to see next topic it is regarding reusable launch vehicle. So title says ISTO to conduct reusable launch vehicle landing experiment zone. So this article mainly talking about this reusable launch vehicle technology demonstration. So this article is very important from your science and technology which mainly comes under your gs paper 3 so now let us try to see context so if you see context it mainly says that our isto in okay that is indian space research organization which is mainly aiming to carry out landing experiment that is also called as lex 
so landing experiment so it is one of the critical component of reusable launch vehicle okay so whenever we are using this launch vehicle to launch any satellite again it will be returning down so in returning down we need to focus on this landing right so this landing experiment which is mainly carrying out by this isro soon so this is about this topic and if you are talking about this uh, isro reusable launch vehicle okay dt so this is the this is that launch vehicle so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so what is this reusable launch vehicle system so this reusable launch vehicle it is system which is capable of launching a payload to the space which is more than one time so not only one time we can use this uh, launch vehicle for many times for the launching of a payload into our space so if you are talking about what is ultimate aim and advantages of this reusable launch vehicle so here whenever we are having a successful launch on this reusable launch, uh, launch vehicle so the launch vehicle uh, or launching of this uh, payload cost will be decreased by 80% so the cost will be decreased and the and we we have normally low cost and it is a very re reliable and as well as on demand space access will be also increased and it will be helpful for our future as launches like future moons mars missions and as well as interplanetary missions etc and it will be helpful to make india a competitive space player globally in terms of chief uh, cheap affordable satellite launching systems and next one is so whenever we are having this technology india will join select league of nations only us that is colombia challenger uh, next one is uh, discovery endeavor atlantis russia soyuz and china's shenko so these are the own space flights of these countries so after once we have this uh, successful testing of this reusable launch vehicle then india will be joining the select league of nations way or having their own space craft capability so i want to give you a main question for the practice so india is going after reusable launch vehicle so even when space agencies like nasa have stopped using them so discuss so we are mainly going after this reusable launch vehicles even when space agencies like nasa have stopped using them so discuss so please give me the answer in the comment box and now let us try to say next topic it is regarding currency swap agreement so this topic is important from your economy point of view which mainly comes in the gs paper 3 so your title says india extends duration of this dollar 400 million currency swap so this is regarding india sri lanka currency swap agreement so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so india which mainly extended the duration of this dollar 400 million currency swap facility with sri lanka so actually we came up with this agreement in january so now we came up with extension of this duration of this dollar 400 million currency swap agreement so if you are so if you are talking about some important details it mainly says that this was the first extension of an international debt instrument to sri lanka for the government led by this president gotabaya rajpaksha on april 12th temporary suspended debt servicing so what happened so this is for the first time we came up with this first extension regarding this currency swap agreement between india and sri lanka okay actually the extension of this inter international debt instrument to sri lanka after the government which mainly led by this god by rajapaksha they temporarily suspended this debt uh, servicing and actually here sri lanka which is now facing uh, exclusive economic crisis and even foreign reserve shortage and balance of payment crisis and is mainly approaching imf for some help so if we talk about some facts regarding this currency swap agreement so an agreement which is mainly between the two friendly countries to involve the trading in their own local currencies so they are going to have trade in their own local currencies so as per agreements both countries they mainly pay for import and as well as export trade at a predetermined rates of exchange without bringing in third country currency like us dollar so they can go for trading with these two local currencies okay and here in this way here the country currency which is mainly involved thereby eliminating the need for worry about the exchange variations so what will be the significance it will mainly improve the confidence in the indian market 
it will be also helpful to agree agree, uh, agree uh, get agreed amount of capital as well and it will also bring down the cost of capital for indian entities and this will be also helpful for the axing of foreign capital markets and it will be also aids in bringing greater stability to foreign exchange and even capital markets in india so this is about this topic and now let us try to see yesterday's questions so first question is regarding zapti system so zapti system it is an important part of revenue administration on the agba consider the following statements so you can also get like so under which mughal rural zapti system was important part of revenue revenue administration that is our agba so it involved measurement of land yes the fixed cash revenue rate is known as dastur on for each crop yes and all revenue collections are made in cash yes so here you need to identify correct statements that is all the above are correct and next question is regarding humayun stomp humayun stomp is a landmark in the development of mughal architecture so consider the following statements regarding this humayun stomp so it is the one of the earliest specimen of garden enclosure yes tomb is octagonal in plan and is crowned by a high dome yes so here correct statements are both 1 and 2 so these are the answers for the yesterday's questions and now let us try to see today's questions so first one it is regarding geysers consider the following statements regarding the geysers which are special type of hot springs and there are three statements are given so try to read these statements and give me the correct option in the comment box and next question is regarding earthquake so consider the following statements regarding earthquake that is seismology so there are again three statements are given so please identify the incorrect statements here okay here also you have to identify the incorrect statements so please try to give the answers in the comment box so here now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf so before seeing this today hindu newspaper pdf i want to make a small announcement we in rathore science we launched this mains answer writing practice course of one year so in this one year course we are mainly giving you weekly targets so based on that weekly target daily one question will be given there will be evaluation of your answer and we provide you model answer and also one to one mentorship so this course is absolutely beneficial to cover your gs1 gs2 gs3 gs4 within one year so try to join this course it is at most beneficial okay and we are also coming up with this pen drive course of entire foundational course and the cost of this pen drive course is very affordable that is just 60000 rupees with validity of validity of 2 years and if you join this entire foundational course one year prelims test series and as plus one year mains answer writing course it is free for you so if you want to contact us for any queries please call us on this number 8074765513 and if you want to watch the demo videos you can visit our website rathore's is academy there you can register with your email id and later on you can watch the three demo videos which is of free of cost in our website so if you have any queries so please call us on this number which is given and if you want this today's pdf so you can join the telegram channel and this link is given in description box so now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf so this is our today's hindu so the date he is 23rd april 2022 and this is delhi edition so what are the page numbers i am showing and what are the pdf i am showing so this is from delhi edition so the first article here it is regarding two jem fidain militants they killed in jammu ahead of pm's visit so two unidentified jaish e mohammed militants they mainly killed killed in jammu and kashmir so here you need to know about who are this jm and here you have to know about cisf that is central industrial security force okay so as i uh, i know i think you might have uh, studied about this bsf crpf so here we are also having one more force that is cisf that is central industrial security force okay so here you need to know some facts regarding this cisf so it is your homework today please try to get some facts regarding this and let me know in the comment box and regarding this india uk defense trade ties i discuss this topic in great detail and next one it is regarding panel at to decide on jobs for children so actually our national technical advisory group on immunization 
so it is mainly need to take some decision regarding approving of this covid 19 vaccines for the children who are between age of 5 to 11 years Right, and if you move forward, I discussed about this postal ballot for this NRIs. And if you move further, leave the city page. And in this uh, state page, I found one article that is regarding reusable launch vehicle. I discussed this topic from our science and technology point of view. And in this editorial page, I discussed regarding this Raisina Hill project. What this is a uh, Pradhana Mantri Sangralaya, I discussed regarding this Park Bay issue. There is one article you have to see here is different narratives. So this is regarding India and Maldives relations. So in yesterday's lecture, we studied about India out campaign, right? So regarding this, there is one editorial which appeared in this today's newspaper. You can easily read that so that you can understand that. And if you move forward in this newspaper, there is nothing much important. And in this 11th page, you can see Ukraine war shifted focus from key issues. So here you can talk about India-Germany issues. Okay. So here Germany mainly says that here Russia, which is mainly moving out of the key issues regarding this Russia-Ukraine war. Okay. And there are many challenges that are mainly seen for the mankind like climate change. That is one of the important challenge. Even poverty reduction, infrastructure and moving towards increasing of military spending and we are mainly concentrating on war and peace so these are the some important uh, important issues which are mainly highlighted by this german envoy so visiting of the general state secretary of the federal ministry for economic cooperation and development he mainly said that germany which is mainly looking for border green uh, and as well as the sustainable development projects uh, partnership with india and we're also coming up with some agreement regarding this green projects and next one is the agreement also covers a broad range of subjects which are related to sustainable development goals as well and we're also coming up with outlining of german plan to phase out the fossil fuels and it want to become carbon neutral country and germany is also going to phase out this nuclear power by 2030 and the last phase state is going to be shut down by 2030 and India, Germany, they are also working towards uh, emerging technologies like artificial intelligence. And they are also working close with Niti Aayog and some ag agreement especially. Okay, so these are the some important things regarding this topic. And we are also coming out with the covering of some developmental uh, cooperations, ethical artificial intelligence. So these are also some important areas of focus. And if you move forward in this 12th page, you can see study flags poor control of blood sugar in India. So blood sugar is nothing but increasing of sugar levels in blood. This condition is called diabetes mellitus. You might be knowing this. So this article says that only 7% over 5,297 individuals in India, they are diagnosed with diabetes. They were able to achieve this blood sugar levels, but not all. Okay, so here this article says that we need to properly maintain our blood sugar levels okay so whenever there is increasing of this blood sugar levels means that will be mainly leading to organic organs important vital organs failure like kidney lungs hearts etc so that will also having some negative impact on the mortality rate and as well as quality of life as well okay so this is about this topic and if you move forward here you can see one image that is neeti ayoks get a new vice chairman and if you are preparing for other public service examinations then this topic is important the government appointed suman k berry so who is the new vice chairman that is suman k berry of our niti ayog right and if you move forward in this world page you can see an article regarding this currency currency swap agreement between india and sri lanka i discussed this topic and if you move forward in this business page you can see one article that is Global sanctions on Russia may help spur Indian exports. So this is according to EEPC. So here engineering exporters, uh, engineering exporters, presentive representative association, okay, representative association, which mainly expect that because of uh, sanctions on Russia, the um, uh, because of uh, this Russia Ukraine war. So because of this russia ukraine war there is increasing of sanctions on russia so because of these sanctions which will be going to have some good opportunities for indian exports so we are going to increase our indian exports for example 
increasing of exports of wheat to England. But there are some challenges. Of course, there are some challenges. But this article says that we are going to increase our imports and Indian engineering exports. They are to replace the Russia's in the global market. So we are going to have good opportunities and we have to utilize this opportunity. So this is the thing which mainly said by this article. So these are some important articles that appeared in our today's newspaper. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Please subscribe to Rathod's IS Academy and don't forget to like, share and comment my videos. And please visit our website Rathod's IS Academy. There you can watch free demo videos of each and every subjects like quality, history, geography, ethics like that. Okay, so by this I'm concluding. Thank you so much.